Okay, so this is Hero's Hearth versus Team Liquid. Let's see, there's more details on this. Um, this is the game two of the 2018 HGC Finals. Uh, this is prior to Divert Powers rework. I don't think he's had any other significant talent changes since then. And it is before the nerf on Arsenal Synergy. It can be played by Homie in this game. In in ten seconds. Five, four, three, one. Unleash the dragon's wrath. <laughs> So he's not splashing the wave correctly because he's hitting the melee minion. Now he's hitting backline. He is doing the W swapping trick, so that's good. He chooses not to rotate bottom here. He's against Vikings. Instead he's just going to push. Man, that's so weird to see people just like walking into towers and trading with people. There's one rotating up to here. This is smart probably of him. I'm curious where the rest of their team is. Yeah, they're definitely looking for him to gank him. So... I want to see if he rotated down what he could have done. They already used that. Nubarak has no dive threat. Arcaner's just... So he doesn't rotate down. The rest of his team is rotating safe way. And it's probably unsafe for him to rotate because they should assume that they're going to be mounting up there. Okay, this makes sense. And then they just have good enough communication that they call that he can't cut over here and get safe back this way. Um, A Nubrax burrow cooldown is back up in time. So yeah, this is probably the smartest play for him to make here. Good communication by them. comes back. They don't miss any XP it looks like. They're slow to get on the camp. It should probably be Phoenix that does camp um, because Hanzo wants to be in the lane to get W stacks. So he's going to clear that. It was an interesting use of the larger Q there. I don't think there was any reason to make it bigger and he could have gone smaller and possibly cleared slightly faster. They're invading. They have Deckard Sapphire, they're against Tracer who's weak in the early game, and they have Vikings. But they have Blaze Bolt down. So this is a 5v4 engage. I'm curious as to why they do this. It might be because they were laid on their own camp. But I think by doing this, McIntyre would lose XP top lane. Unless they get a kill, like, very immediately. But they're going to do that on... HP is pretty close to dead, too. I think possibly they should have been able to kill HP when tr tanks would have traded there. Let's watch that back again. So HP is going in really deep before his team is here to follow up. Let's see why this happens the way it does. So he sees... To Rond, and she's rotating unsafely through Garrosh without a Nubrak there to help. So he's engaging. He wants to just step in so that he doesn't get stunned off of the point because he's not level 4 yet and zoned off or body blocked by a Nubarak. So he kind of has to step up fast enough. I guess Arcaner does go in and use the bomb on him. I thought maybe he would be able to finish that kill, but maybe not. He tries for it, and now he's going to be taking too much damage and possibly get bursted if he doesn't get out right now, so that's why he blinks out. Yeah, okay, no. Well played by Ishbi there. And now McIntyre can rotate up in time. He pushed in the wave really hard. Oh, that's why he rotated, probably, because the Vikings was freezing. McIntyre should stay mounted here. 
Because he's the one that needs to go top lane. He shouldn't dismount himself mid. Get through this, engage. Yeah. This should just be Phoenix that clears this. And McIntyre should rotate top ASAP. He doesn't need to dismount here. This allows Phoenix to rotate down. They don't have a siege camp, but they're still just going to push bot tower as four. Why would they do this instead of the siege camp? It keeps control of the bottom altar. Blaze is likely going to be able to win top. You would assume that the other team is on their bruiser camp. Did we see them clearing the siege camp still? No, they've already cleared it at this point. But you don't see them mid and you don't see them bottom, so the only place on the map for them to be is the siege camp. You see Tehran down here, just to soak the XP. Um, they're not doing the bruiser, interesting. Did Jaina just have to back for mana after blizzarding on the clear to clear the camp? Yes, that's what happened. Okay, interesting. So they're gonna push. Gets a throw on Tracer, but that's not gonna lead to anything. He's getting stunned. They just trade out. Get the tower for free. Ishbu's still kind of chunked, but there's potions. They can actually fight this. Is this a 4v4? Yes. But they don't want to lose XP mid, so homie's going to rotate out. Which makes sense. So instead, they shouldn't fight here. Although they'll try and just stall to see if they can keep the half on this. And then if McIntyre can win top lane, which he definitely is, then homie can sneak a DK uncontested. But it looks like they're going to have to give up bottom, so instead homie's just going to fast clear mid. I want to check out the wave clear did here. It's interesting to me that he doesn't like... Something that I do, almost always, you'll see me do, is I W so that I'm walking around with bomb. And it's mostly just so that I don't have to do it when I want to wave clear or camp clear or something. But it's also just so I'm already at longer range, so if I accidentally A-click somebody, I'm not going to step as close to them. Um, and I have longer range by default that I can dismount. So it's interesting that he doesn't do that. Like here, he's decided that he wants to bomb these, but like he's already been in range and he could have been in range. It's like, it's like he has to get in range to repeater first before he switches to bomb to do the attack. It's kind of weird. But he is bombing the wave correctly now. He's still not making his Q as small as it can be. It doesn't matter in this case. He should angle himself back slightly to hit the Q on all four of these minions. Okay, he does that. Good. Now he just has to sit mid to make sure that they don't cap anything. He can kill a viking for free. I forget that he's mobile offense in this game too. I'll have to remember that. Uh, same situation as we saw earlier in the game where he's going to have to back up again, especially versus a tracer. It's really hard for him to get away. And he doesn't want to have to use warp for anything other than dodging the bomb in this matchup. And if he gets jumped on by an Anubarak, he should basically die because... All they have to do at that point is hold a Nubarak Q, and they can follow up with Tarant stun, and he should basically never be able to get a warp. So he has to just avoid getting jumped on in the first place. Shibu comes to try and help defend DK. He's just going to trade into a Nubarak. He's going to soak another wave. Again, he's not hitting all seven minions with this Q here. And obviously, mobile offense itself is very non-optimal at this point, but I'm not going to mess too much with that. So he's W-swapping. He's getting Q hits on the bruisers. You could technically... I think you get three hits on both of them. That's really all you need. You can technically get more hits than that, but it's normally not worth it. Like, you could technically stutter step counterclockwise around this sort of area in this, like, oval shape, but... It's not too bad, so he gets one, two hits. Yeah, three hits. So he starts it over here and then moves to the right so that he ends getting all three hits on both. He's doing the W swapping. This is before the Divert reworks, so where Combat Advantage was the meta talent to take. This is good. Um, He's only hitting three minions here. It's 
kind of on his team that they didn't clump these for him as well. But he's queuing in small distance here, so that's good. He's still W swapping, hitting all three minions. Could have swapped to a repeater at the end to get slightly faster kill on the last one. That's fine. Gets dismounted there, that's unfortunate. He shouldn't be in repeater here. He should be bomb, and he should be looking to bomb splash the tower. Like, this minion is very unimportant. And he can potentially, he can at least hit two things, but he can probably hit at least a Nubarak also with a splash. And it helps block the, or, and it helps clear the, um, it's weird that my camera's doing that. Kill the Anubarak beetles so that Hanzo can get scatters in. So yeah, I, th I think I see very few Phoenixes use bomb splash on Siege. And I think that's something that people should be doing more. This is good. He should hold Q here for this next wave coming in. I guess it's kind of far, but he should hold Q here. Well, yeah, I still think he should hold Q here, because it's much more efficient for him to clear the wave than anyone else, because he does the same siege damage at the same time. Whoops, I didn't want it back. It also means he has Q on cooldown so that he can't proc target acquired as easily if somebody engages into them. It would have to be off a Deckard Sapphire. I guess that's maybe fine. I would have held it here, because it looks like we're going to fight, possibly. But, eh, he almost has Q back up in time that he could use it on the wave here. He should be stepping forward, instead of stepping forward, so that the minions are clumped here and his minions live as long as possible, and he takes the damage on his shield. Um, and then he should be... Like, he wants to catch the wave, sort of like this area, so that you can bomb all seven minions and still bomb the, the fort. And then he queues and hits all eight things, the seven minions and the structure at the same time. He's bomb swapping. Again, he's using big W or big Q there a little bit too much, I think. Yeah, here's a situation. He does the same thing again. He's not like preemptively switching to bomb. He's doing it like after he gets in repeater range almost. It's very weird. But this, he's using bomb splash on, on Siege better. Okay, so that's good. He understands that at least. Because this way you get uh, 3.75 times damage. Whereas using Repeater, you only get 2.5. So if you can hit more than two things, especially with the Bomb Splash, this is superior on even two targets. So even if it's just a tower and a wall, it's better to hit this. And you do want to clear side walls, especially for Garrosh and Blaze, I think. Um, it's sometimes helpful and sometimes not helpful for Hanzo. Um, and having the walls up, it does help Deckard land stuff. But I still think overall it's a benefit to kill walls as much as possible. Here I would definitely not queue for Siege, you want to save it for heroes almost exclusively in this situation. Ishbu's getting dismounted, Homie's going to rotate out because they're losing a lot of soak top, the other team's going to be level 10 very soon. They are kind of 5v4 down here though. But they got everything that they're going to get out of the push, so there's actually no purpose in them being bottom anymore. And they don't want to take this camp because they don't want to get caught fighting over it while the other team hits level 10, and the Vikings are getting a big push in top lane. They're sending Phoenix back to deal with it, instead of Blaze. Hmm. I'm not sure if there's a benefit one way or the other to doing that. I think I would have sent Blaze to do it, if only for the sake of showing the information on the minimap that you still don't know where Phoenix is. They would have seen once they owled the camp. I don't know. It's interesting. They're keeping Phoenix top now, and Blaze is soaking mid. This is very strange. Is this just to kill Vikings and have Blaze able to rotate sooner? If a fight breaks out? That kind of makes some sense. They definitely want Phoenix to hit the DK though. I'm not sure, should he queue the DK? Or should he save it for like an Anubarak dive or a Tracer? He should probably queue the DK. That would be my guess. But he isn't. Now he is, sort of. He's standing in the blizzard there a little bit. Not really ideal. So this is like one of the main situations where Arsenal Synergy is like just 
so much better than mobile offense is you would be doing the same single target damage to this but you would have splashed damage on their squishies when they were when the dk was standing like over here or you'd splash the anubarak right and even if you just chunk them for like 200 300 health or whatever that's just like now they're at 80 percent health 85 percent health instead of being at 100 percent they're like way easier to kill if you get a garage throw or something or maybe arcaner can't play as aggressive on tracer being at lower health and her potions are all the way back here um but also you would have splashed again all the anubarak beetles you would have splashed this whole wave this whole wave would be dead you would have gotten these giants to like half hp like you would have gotten so much more damage out of uh out of arsenal synergy here on this push and it just would have helped anti-siege a lot how did he take his whole shield in damage here he stood in the blizzard for two waves oh he's tanking the rocks and the fire okay yeah you have to walk through the fire there he tanks another rock he gets a potion okay He's staying in the bush there to regen shield. I'm interested why he's not pulling this camp. They're looking for a kill mid? I don't think there's any kill that they ever get here. They should be just face checking a bush though. They do have McIntyre to flank here. I mean this is a 5v4, so now it's good that he's not doing this camp. It's like they... Wow, this is actually just a really good call then. It's like they baited that they were doing the camp and that's why Ishbu's checking the bush because they don't have vision past this point. So they don't know whether they're starting the camp or not until they show on midwave right now, which only Crowen should be or McIntyre. And they think McIntyre is possibly just clearing this to then go top. So he's getting a charge. They've already engaged on Garrosh and committed, so Crowen can show. And then BBJ and Homie are right here, and he can get a big Q salvo. They can Dragon Arrow off the Blaze Engage here, and they can, like, Decker can step in for a sleep over this wall. And Arcaner's going to still hit the Garrosh. The Garrosh might die, but they should be able to kill the backline here really Really strong engage and strat calling from, from Hero's Hearth. He didn't step in far enough to get the Q on the backline though. And Ishbu's dying really fast. They get a bunker down for Ishbu. He gets out not being slept. They still finish him off with the blaze. Crone does good damage. Okay, so how did this engage not go as well as it felt like it should have? Oh, Blaze Charge gets barely clipped by the so person in the bush. I thought it was going to hit the back line. Okay, so that's a big part of it. And then Dragon Arrow lands. This Q isn't as big as it could be. Um, I don't know how I can show that. Can I go back? Does this show the range of Q? Well, Q's a bigger range than, than he uses here, I think. Like, this Q could be out here. And then it would clip at least one of them, if not two. And he doesn't get a slow on either one. There, the Haswabs, whoever that is, Jaina, is in the uh, Blaze Oil, though. Good dodge by the Anubarak to dodge the sleep, though. Can't really chase in. Checking bot camp timer. Now they did the camp. So that was still a pretty good engage that they got a kill on the enemy tank. And it could have gone a lot better. Again, he's not doing... He's under, like, no threat once the Uberx dead. I don't know why he's so scared. And Ishbu's right there to ally throw him, even if he does get into trouble. He can definitely step up and clear this wave faster. Or kill the the Viking. Should be zoning for the bot camp that's spawning in like ten seconds. They scout it with an owl. They were doing their bruisers. This is good wave clear. Definitely hold Q here. I would maybe try and get it on Arcanier, just to tag him, and just like threaten so that he has to blink away and it chunks him a tiny bit. Wonder if he steps in to do that. It's also helpful to save it for the Anubarak, to be fair. But it and it's risky to step up to the Anubarak. Yeah, I maybe would have tried it on the Arc on Arcaner, on the Tracer. Would have hit a Q. It makes Ishbu landing a Q a lot easier for him as well. She should blink it every time, to be fair, but 
he makes it possible. I guess he just doesn't want to get engaged on until they've finished clearing the camp and then we'll engage with the spell armor. Yeah, this makes more sense actually. Okay, I kind of like not playing aggressive there though. Okay, mount up. Again, I don't know why he's not preemptively selecting Q. I'm also kind of scared of this push. I'm surprised they just walk in here like this. I mean, this camp just respawned. How do they know for sure that they're dead doing this camp and not sitting in that bush? That's my question. So you see Jaina and Tracer. Tracer does disappear walking kind of this way. Yeah, it's, that's a hard that's a hard choice there. It looks like she possibly could just be faking walking this way and then turning back around and like looping around to go sit in this bush. Yeah, if they're all set in this bush, this should be a good engage for Liquid, I think. It's just lucky that they're not there, kind of. I mean, not lucky, but I think they should have checked that bush. I think Hanzo Arrow should be used to scout, like, sort of this area, if you can. Like, you want to at least scout this bush. Like, just put it sort of in there for the circle. Like, aim it where this thing is. Instead, it's over here. Um, he could even step up closer to this wall to aim it over. I feel like they should definitely check this bush, though. McIntyre doesn't want to check it with oil because he wants to stay mounted to charge in for the engage, but Garrosh is already dismounted. And he wants to use oil to land the blaze stun. Maybe you have to use Sonic Arrow for that bush. I don't know. I don't know what the best answer is to check that bush. Because you don't want to use Deckard spells either, and you don't want to use Phoenix Q. You need some way to check that bush, I feel like. Or you just need to, like, know that they're on this, but until you see the Hanzo arrow go down, I'm not sure how you can know that. Okay, he, they burrow out after they get the camp, that's fine. They're just going to push in with their bruisers, looking for the bot lane keep. I still keep focusing on what homie's doing here. Getting good bomb splashes. That welly was really early. That was a really questionable use of welly, I feel like. Definitely save Q for a fight here. I like his positioning of like getting as far away from me and Ubrak as possible to give as much time to react to sidestep the burrow charge. I think he's still stepping in too close here. Like he should be playing just a, a hair back and going out in and out of max W range of repeater to auto this. Even autoing the the uh, the well is fine. He's using splash here. He's not hitting the backline caster minions though. But this is good that he at least knows to do this. Like, he should be starting to splash them back here, even. Eh, he kind of is. I think he was doing it, splashing the melee minions there, though. This is a good engage. You just immediately QR here, and you're going to be hitting this person. Or maybe has webs. Yeah, probably not Tracer. He can't get to Tracer. He doesn't want to go through a new break. He should step in and actually tank some damage from the core because he just wants to stay out of the line he's forming here for a new break, Q, and Burrow Charge. So he just wants to like sidestep up this way, or kind of like diagonally this way, to stay in range and get damage on here. He needs to QR sooner in this fight. Like he should have already... Okay, that's that's about the right time. Yeah, he finishes off the Jaina, good. Do they end here? Should they be able to end here? That's the question. Sava used to do so much fucking damage. It's insane. They have no Jaina, so Tracer's their only damage threat. I think they've popped Ancient Blessings already. They just have Taunt and Sleep. Tracer does have a bomb. Anubarak's backing because he's half HP. They've used Shadow Stock. Should they be able to end here?
Uh, I don't think they can end. The question is, is it worth getting the core damage, or should they defend bot keep? The problem is their recalls are going to get stalled if they try and recall, so maybe they just have to commit to the core. But losing their bot keep is kind of rough. Hmm. That's a tough call. I'm wondering why they did this. Let's see how it plays out. So, he tries to get a sleep down to catch the tracer. I feel like that was too optimistic and that shouldn't ever really land. And I don't think you used any setup. Like, if you landed on the Tehran so that you can get a second kill, that's good. But you didn't really set up, like, uh, Sapphire into Root into sleep. This feels like it wasn't communicated. It's kind of just used to disengage, I guess. But also, this clumping is really bad for a new Brack. Like, he can dive three backline right now. He just gets a Q first, and then he does it. He only hits one, but it's homie. He should be kiting back down this way. Getting stuck up here is really rough. He should definitely kite back down this way. It stays near BBJ for additional potions. It stays closer to Ishbu to get ally thrown. It stays he's staying kind of closer to McIntyre for a bunker here, but bunker's already been used. Okay, so he changes pretty quick after that. They use play again. Oh no, they don't use play again. It's just two Vikings. They just have to disengage once Blaze dies. And Ishbu's dead, he's just a sacrifice. Good try by BBJ to let the Hanzo mount up. Hanzo can probably jump over this wall and get out. Or this wall. Okay, he just was mounted up and he's fine. He's gonna get Dovon soon. Really good re uh, ricochet hit there by Crone. Preemptive root. BBJ is just dead at this point. They're going to kill the uh, Viking to trade. And then back off. So they got 9% core damage. They lost a tiny bit themselves. That basically doesn't matter. Tanks and Owl. Ooh, what happened to Crone? Gets jumped on by Tracer, gets bombed. Has to get ally thrown to get saved from parting gift. Possibly. And has to dodge an owl. Get body blocks for the owl. Yeah, you, you just give that camp at that point you're down 16. There's no reason to fight over it. This camp does nothing. I'm surprised at how much pressure they've put out top lane and how effective it's actually being. Meanwhile, mid fort is still up. Like, I feel like... Liquid would have been better off just pressuring the mid fort somehow. The problem is, how do you pressure the mid fort when Blaze Phoenix can clear so easily? Even Hanzo to an extent. And a lot of the camp fights have gone really poorly for Liquid, actually. Here you clear. Your Q would be better off hitting these minions. And you can dodge all the shots on these. So you want to clear these first, because that way you won't take damage on your shield and you can regen it to full. If you clear these first, you're going to be taking damage on your shield and you might start a fight half shield. They still don't want to fight till they're 16. I think that he should have stayed bottom. But they're joining up here to contest DK. Yeah, this makes sense. They're just going to have to fight before 16, probably. I hope that Hanzo... Out. This is really sketchy, it feels like. How many people did they see? I just see Anubarak. And Tyrande. Okay, so you know one was bottom. Anubarak was coming up from bottom. And one was top. We don't know who was top. We see Anubarak, Tyrande. So at most, it's Tracer Jaina down here. And a Viking. Maybe this is still safe? I feel like if Jane is somehow just sitting in this bush, you just die. 
If she went root, she could kill him. She shouldn't have gone armor. She should definitely go root against Phoenix. It's really good against Hansa, really good against Garrosh, really good against Phoenix. Because he can't warp. But yeah, I think if he has root here, it means he can't warp a tracer bomb. And Jaina just blows him up. They owl him, he has to come back. Trying to get 16 still. Blaze has a good flank here. I am a little scared for him to be stepping up close to that bush. See like four of them up here? Okay, maybe this is fine. Yeah, this is probably fine then. Okay. Wasn't as scary as it looked. He's going in for a Q salvo. His main target here should be... Is this a Viking? That's Jaina. Okay, his main target's Jaina, then Tyrande. And he has to just be ready to warp a Tracer. The Tracer's going to go for either Deckard or Hanzo, though. So he might not be able to focus Tyrande. He might have to turn around to focus the Tracer. He warps in. Why? I'm very confused. That was a much better welly. This is a really good flank engage from McIntyre. They get the prone follow-up. He gets the Q in Salvo. Oh, he has a bomb on him. I see. Okay. I was just playing it too fast. Um, Does he think he could get in Bunker in time? He's kind of getting body blocked, possibly, right now. And he was getting meleeed. So he just warps in case. That's kind of fair. Was there any way that they interrupt warp there, really? Let's see what spells they use in this fight. We see Shadowstalk. We see Cocoon. We see Burrow. I don't know where Tyrande used Lunar Flare. Uh, what number is she? Zero? She hasn't used Lunar Flare. It's pretty hard for her to interrupt warp, though. Yeah, this warp was pretty safe. Alright. I respect that. And it secures all the Salvo Missiles fire, which pressures their healer even more. Yeah, that was probably the good, correct play there. He snap locks offensive cadence. I would not have gone offensive cadence against this team. This is a very clear photonic weaponry team in my opinion. Even assuming Anubarek has spell armor at this point, which he might, I still think you go photonic weaponry. Because he's a low health bar, and they have three other squishies that are all very vulnerable to your spell damage. Especially from Q and Salva being buffed and doing a bunch more damage. Well, it's not buffed, but it's unnerfed, whatever. Good try on the sleep. They could use sleep a lot better in fights, I feel like. Like, there's the flank engage, there's the arrow. BBJ can just step up right now, or even just right now. Honestly, just sleep like this direction. And your only goal is to hit Arcaner. If you hit Sports Billy, that's good too. Yeah, or even step in and then, like, gonna try and sleep like this direction, sort of. That defends Crone and BBJ just so well if you just sleep and zone off the Arcaner. Especially when he goes in on homie. Arcaner should never go in on homie here. He's gonna warp the bomb every single time. He has to go on Crone or BBJ, I feel like. And the Anubrax burrowing out instead of burrowing on Squishies. If he had burrowed on Phoenix here, they maybe get a kill. But this is a really awkward engage for TL. I mean, they weren't expecting the Jaina to blow up and die instantly, I guess, but... I still think that was just, like, a fundamental matchup misunderstanding from Arcaner. Because you're never going to land a bomb on Phoenix unless he, you have CC. So they're going to send one bottom. They see a Nubarak, so he's fine. He has warp back up now. Good, Ishbu standing on point. I don't see the merit in going for bot camp here.
It's 3v3 mid. They can still get engaged on. Although Tracer probably doesn't have a bomb. I guess they have taunt and ally throw. That still seems very risky to play mid like that. I think I would have sent like four bottom and blaze top or something. I'm not sure what I would have shot called here. The bot camp seems relatively unimportant though. Like if you get DK, you can probably core without the camp, I think. Your core is under attack. Our keep has been reduced to rubble. They have now lost two keeps. So do they end here without DK and just the camp? Is that what happens? Huh. I mean, you can solo this camp, sure. They just run this down. They have to get a kill here, then. That's the only way they end through this. Again, really weird, awkward, early, early, welly usage here that I do not agree with. Like, this is just the easiest welly to kill of all time, and it's going to get very little damage. Does Jaina even have Ice Block quest done? No. Because she's dying before using Icy Veins, and you really miss playing welly. Like, they just ignore this, and it's going to die to, like, Phoenix Q even. They don't even have to, like, focus it. Oh, homie's getting mega chunked, though. Because they didn't finish it off. So now it's free hitting him. And he's not standing in spell armor. Yeah, they, like, wanted to try and race this. First of all, this warp in is, like, mega BM. Like, oh, I guess they see they're just core racing at this point. I understand now. Okay, that's why he warps in. He, they see them to mid. And now they're just going to try and get a kill on the Jaina. Because they see a Uber X, so they know they have no threat. Okay, this warp in makes more sense. Wow, their shot calling is actually really good. Like, I'm watching these replays for the first time or whatever, and I'm mostly paying attention to like what's nearby the Phoenix and what's going on. I'm not paying attention to the minimap super closely, but still, I'm impressed by their shot calling in this game a lot. So he misses the Q on Jaina. He gets poked by... Q, and another Q, and another Q, and he actually goes down. Did they lose this game? Because they don't have any core race now with just Hanzo. Yeah, well. Oh, I think the display wasn't working. Unless, did she just actually complete quests like 8k to full off just the Hanzo, or just the uh, Phoenix kill? She gets 10k there, 11, 12, 13. 14. And then quest complete here off these spells. Yeah, wow. Okay. Respect. I'm really surprised they were able to end here. I think this was still a Hero's Hearth misplay. This bot camp still seems relatively unimportant to me, and it basically slowed down their push and did nothing for them. Like, I think if they're going to core at this point, they need to have five people going here. Like, not sitting three people mid, once they get the half cap on bottom. And then, either they do this camp way faster, because right now they're still sitting four people around here. If they had five people doing this camp, they would have been dead by now and like, walking. And then they have a lot more time before they respawn. They, this should have already been cleared. Like, they just have an extra five or ten seconds here, and that's probably all the difference you need. Homies... I still think using warp here was really poor of him. Like that. Because it saves you, like, at best, maybe a second of traveling. Maybe. But then they would have spell armor. He wouldn't die to the Jaina, most likely. You can warp away from the Jaina mid damage because she doesn't have root combo. And all you have to do is, like, have McIntyre or Ishbu just, like, zone her off. Because as long as Phoenix lives long enough here, I think they can end. Because Phoenix is like their main core damage, and they just let him die, kind of. They didn't ally throw him. They didn't have a bunker, they didn't have sleep or whatever, because they used it late in the fight. 58%. I feel like that 5 second difference is really the only thing that made that made the game. I still dislike the play of going for bot camp in general, and I think I would have gone for DK. And that seems like a much more guaranteed victory to me. But I think they were getting antsy that they were respawning and about to be level 20, and they already had two keeps down, and they can't prevent a DK 
post level 20. So it was either like they go for DK and that DK has to win the game after they all respawn, or they lose, or they base race, and they chose the base race option. And to be fair, I think it almost would have worked if they and they were just slow on executing it. Really interesting game though, actually. I didn't expect they would lose that. Even though they were kind of behind in XP, that's just like the nature of what Vikings will do. Very low hero damage game too. Part of that was not using Arsenal Synergy and Splashing. And part of it was this talent. What if this would this talent have made any difference in the fight? I mean, it does, like, Photonic Weaponry also does more damage to the core. But that shouldn't make a significant difference. Interesting. Alright, 